Hello and welcome to Clean Talk. I'm your host, Brad Whitchurch, and we are coming to you live from the beautiful Seal Shield Studios here in downtown Orlando, Florida. Very excited to have a Seal Shield first uh, at Clean Talk. Uh, we have two guests today. My first guest is Bradley Carlson. He is the group leader for the Point of Care group at Touchpoint Medical. And uh, he's joined here with us today by Paul Landazuri, who's the president at Peripheral Resources. Gentlemen, welcome to Clean Talk. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Great to have you on the show. Really excited to have two guests. It's a clean talk first. And let me start with you first, Bradley. Uh, what more can you tell us about your background and Touchpoint Medical and why you're on clean talk today? Sure, I'd be happy to. So my background uh, started with uh, industrial design or product design. I went to the University of Cincinnati, ended up in a number of different uh, areas, including toy design, consumer electronics, uh, worked at design consultancy, eventually moved into uh, capital goods and healthcare equipment with a company called Intermetro uh, about uh, 30 plus years ago. And uh, from my design background, moved into a product management uh, role. Uh, what you get, that, as they say, no good deed goes unpunished. You know, we design products and until you're not supporting it right, you're not promoting it right, they're like, go do it. So that's that's kind of my uh, stepping into the, the sales and marketing side. And then. Uh, Six plus years ago, uh, Intermetro divested of the healthcare technology products and uh, Touchpoint Medical uh, was born on June 1st of 2016, uh, privately held with uh, very deep roots going back to 1899. Um, so it's a wonderful position uh, to be in, to be able to have the, the freedom and, and the ability to fund new, new product development uh, efforts. So as I said, of my uh, 35 years or so, about 25, uh, years of it has been in the capital goods uh, or medical equipment side of things. Well, we love product developers and innovative healthcare solutions. So we look forward to talking to you more about the great solutions you're developing over at Touchpoint Medical. But first, let me go to Paul. Uh, Paul, tell us about peripheral resources and uh, your background. Sure. Um, the president of Peripheral Resources, my background is in electrical engineering and finance. Uh, peripheral Resources is a uh, distributor as well as a master systems integrator. Uh, we've been around for over 37 years. We uh, work in a lot of different vertical markets, but uh, primarily in healthcare at this point. Uh, that's where our focus is. A lot of the things that we try to do is try to find better ways to facilitate the hospitals, uh, even, you know, try to make things easier for them to work with the patient and not with the technology. That's uh, kind of pushed out on, on us. Uh, so we've been doing that for quite some time. We do work with other, other verticals, including some OEM development. And that's where a lot of our background in creating solutions and developing these solutions for our customers comes from. Well, that's a great background. Uh, you know, we're all about infection control here at Clean Talk, and I've really been impressed by uh, the infection control approach in the design and development of products from both of your organizations. But uh, I'm curious, you came as a package deal. How did you guys meet? Are you ready for this? I'm ready. <laughs> so we met at Hims in Orlando, where you are, uh, back in March. Uh, we were both, uh, I'll say, guest starring at a Channel Partners booth. Uh, uh, Cybernet uh, was kind enough to in invite both of us. Uh, we did not have our own booth uh, this past Hims, and um, so I met Paul and uh, his his counterpart Kevin, and they were right on the other side of the cart. Uh, I was I was showing, featuring a Cybernet uh, uh, all in one on it, and I looked over at this scanner and I was like, "Tell me about this. I've never seen anything like that." And uh, so. Between talking to customers, we talked to each other a lot during the, the the several days. So that's that's where we met. I don't know if you want to add to that, Paul. Yeah. So there's you know it seemed like there was a lot of synergy between what they were doing and what this new scanner that we were launching at the show, both in our booth and and also at Cybernet's booth. And uh, we, you know there was a lot of interest for it, and a lot of people were talking about it. And obviously, Brad saw how a partnership between both our companies could benefit both of us. And that's kind of how we met. And um, I think we've been pretty close and uh, working together ever since. Yeah. I mean, to, to build on that, we left 
I actually, I, I left Hims and went directly to New Orleans for AORN, the operating new room uh, nurses uh, convention, and uh, had uh, one of the scanners on the cart. They sent it into my hotel and we took it over the convention uh, hall and showed it on the cart. And we're talking about at the uh, end of this month, actually having a cart in their, their show at the uh, clinical labs uh, expo in Chicago with the same same combination, their scanner and our cart. So, so far so good, it's working out very, really well. Well guys, I love the story behind the story in that it's the trade show connection and isn't it great to be back at trade shows? I think we were ships passing in the night. I was at all those shows as well and, and I love to hear the story about the successful connections there. How, yeah. how important is trade shows to you guys uh, in your efforts to sell and market your products? Well, for our product, I think it's very important, uh, especially because there's a lot of different varieties of scanners. And it's kind of difficult to illustrate all the great features that ours <clears> has unless it's in front of you. You know, if you have hands on, especially our scanner doesn't have a traditional trigger. That's always kind of a little different to try to explain it to people. But once you see it, put your hand on it and understand that there's there is a trigger there, even though you don't see it or or understand that as a tactical feeling you know it makes a big difference so for us being in front of the customers is very important not only to demonstrate the product but to get their feedback what do you think how does it feel you know what are those reactions those are important for us because that's how we build on what we have today for the next version and the next version well, I know there are a lot more features and benefits to that scanner. We were talking about it earlier. I'm really impressed with uh, the design that you guys came up with. I think it's a, a major improvement, for, it's certainly from an infection control standpoint. And I do want to talk about infection control uh, as a catalyst for product development. Bradley, I'll come back to you. Um, if I may say, the medical cart space is a crowded space. Um, yes. And there are a lot of medical cart manufacturers at the shows you mentioned. What does Touchpoint do to differentiate your products and what are the features and benefits that make you stand out? Well, I'll, I'll start with the antimicrobial and move into some of the uh, other benefits of, of, of products. So we have for the point of care power carts, access points. So we have a, a global uh, agreement with uh, Microband for that product. Other products, uh, we don't have the same agreement, but antimicrobial cleanability uh, is really built into every level of design decision, you know, minimizing as, as with Paul's product, maybe not to that level, every crack and crevice and parting lines and making sure that, you know, cleanability is really front and foremost. Um, obviously with the onset of COVID, that awareness became you know, 10x or 100x over the last two and a half years to the point where, you know, it used to be a battle with IT and nursing and maybe a uh, ergonomics person. Now it's like infection control is in that top one or two that you got to get past. And it really has changed how certainly point of care cards uh, are perceived and evaluated. Simple things like a twin caster. Uh, I've seen RFPs where that's, that's not even accepted just from a cleanability standpoint. Uh, and then some of the other very unique features with Access Point, our powered cart uh, product line on the point of care side, is the fact that we're one of the few or maybe the only one in the U.S. that's really offering a DC optimized solution. Uh, the market kind of shifted um, maybe seven or eight years ago to more of a DIY plug and play with AC cart solutions. What that does is really robs 20 to 25 percent efficiency, which means battery runtime. So for a caregiver, making sure that they can get through a full shift without stopping and plugging in a cart, that's very important. So going back to our legacy flow healthcare days, that was really their secret sauce. So we continue to look at DC optimized solution just so that we're delivering maximum runtime. Again, trying to create the best user experience, which we hope in the end is the best, you know, patient outcome experience. So, you know, I always say, you know, happy, uh, happy nurses make make better patients and better patient outcomes. 
Absolutely. Uh, well, Bradley, uh, really excited to hear about the focus on infection control in the design and your observations that that has been a change since COVID. So, you know, we're always looking for those silver linings. And uh, most of our uh, audience are in the healthcare field, and most of them are infection control practitioners. But for anyone outside of healthcare, you know, they probably don't realize what a critical piece of equipment these medical carts are for point of care. And to hear that now there is a focus on adding infection prevention technology into the design, I think it's fantastic. Um, you mentioned Microban. You know, uh, Michael Ruby, the president of Microban, was a previous guest on Clean Talk. Uh, quick cl plug for Clean Talk. You can check out that episode and all our archival episodes on the Clean Talk YouTube channel. But Bradley, what can you tell me about working with Microban and the benefit that that solution provides? Well, I will I'll be totally transparent. When I worked at Intermetro and we, we started working with Microban, I don't know that it was known. Now you can look at a baby changing station or a tube of uh, shower sealant or other products or food service equipment, cutting boards, knife handles, and it is a recognized name from a consumer level. And certainly, you know, our decision makers and, and people that are um, key influencers in the purchase of carts are also consumers, you know, whether it's a caregiver, an IT person. You know, now you see microban on television ads, you know, for some of the cleaning and disinfectant. So it does have, I believe, certainly some power behind that name. They've done a great job of getting that out there, getting that message and the name out there. I agree. Uh, probably the most recognized name in antimicrobial and certainly a great uh, secondary uh, protection for the products. Um, and I love the fact that your carts are so easily cleaned. A lot of those same attributes with uh, your products, Paul, that we want to talk about. You mentioned the scanner, and uh, I, I've, I've seen the design uh, online, and a lot of benefits. No nooks and crannies, so it's easy to clean. And do you have antimicrobial protection in that product as well? Yes, absolutely. So it's not only antimicrobial, but disinfectant ready, which means you can wipe it with various chemicals that you find in healthcare. Uh, and those were the, the two things that we knew we were going to start with. And then all the other things that our customers uh, gave us feedback on. So uh, the nooks and crannies, like you said, our scanner is completely, it's fully sealed. So there's no screws. It's uh, it's hot sealed. There's, it's got one seam on there that's fully protected. Uh, one, of, uh, one of the benefits of having a fully sealed scanner is that it has a high IP rating. We had one hospital that was very interested in the scanner because they wanted to put it in an environment where after it was used and needed to be washed in either running water or in the tub of soapy water. So ours was you know, obviously successful in that environment. Uh, well, some of the other things that make the scanner unique is because we eliminated all those nooks and crannies and the contacts and all that, uh, that you don't need to worry about rusting. We had another health chain up here in Northern California, they had to replace 5,000 scanners because their contacts wore out. They rusted from continuously wiping them with the solvents. And after a while, they wouldn't charge anymore. So we wanted to make sure that we didn't have those problems and we wanted to, we created it so that it was wireless charging. And some of, the, some of them also said, well, when we seat it on the charger, it doesn't sit right correctly sometimes. And so we think it's ready to go. When we pick it up, it's not. And so we wanted to address that as well. So we put magnetic coupling on there on the scanner. So when you put it on the base, the magnets suck it into the right position so that it's charging uh, correctly. So a lot of these features came in because our main concern was to make sure that the hospitals were able to wipe it down and clean it. Yes, it's it's antimicrobial, but they always are, they're always going to wipe it down. They're always going to put alcohol or cavi wipes or some material like that and make sure that it's completely disinfected. So that's where the idea came from. Even our trigger, it's kind of like a cell phone. You know, you can touch it, and if you press it a little bit harder, it actually activates the scanner. It's not a tactile scanner. Uh, button the way you have it on a traditional scanner. So all of that is so that it's easier for the hospital to just wipe it quick, clean, seamless, easy to, to keep the infection 
control in place. Well, and a lot of people don't realize that the antimicrobial product protection actually can help protect the product from some of those harsh disinfectants and Absolutely. cleaners. And uh, so that's a benefit there. You guys have both talked about the antimicrobial product protection as well as the cleanability. Have you seen any other modalities? Uh, uh, and and Paula, I'll ask you because I know you have a lot of mobile devices and handheld devices in your portfolio. Are you seeing hospitals use uh, any other maybe emerging uh, disinfecting modalities, UV radiation or anything yeah, beyond yeah. Uh, washing? Absolutely. The UV is, uh, I think, something that I see more and more. Um, they have the UV cabinets where you put things in there for a certain period of time and it completely disinfects them. I think that's really good for the mobile devices. You know, if you have buttons, you have tactile feelings to it, uh, you, you need to have something more. Uh, I know that uh, Denso spoke with uh, somebody from your place about actually creating an overlay to help that as well. So that's another thing that we see, uh, some uh, antimicrobial overlays that can go over the Android devices. So those, those are the two things that we see more and more coming up. At the base though, the antimicrobial uh, plastics is always a big thing, but there are other things coming up. Well, I look forward to taking that discussion <laughs> offline, but let's talk about your guys' partnership. You met recently through the trade shows, you have synergistic products. Where does the partnership between you two go from here? Well, so let me go back to Paul's story real quick, because that was really the home run for me that really stuck uh, with me when he talked about the, the IDN, the healthcare IDN in Northern California, looking at replacing 5,000 scanners because of contacts getting corroded from constant cleanability, which by the way, we see the same- All the with, time. With, with monitors. They spray them down, and if they follow the cleaning protocol, it's not a medical grade monitor. You get the green, uh, excuse me, blue screen of death. So the fact that a caregiver or a nurse is using one of these scanners, it's not the Denso scanner, and maybe 20% of the time, 30% of the time, they're not capturing a patient record. They're not capturing meds. They're being slowed down. They're getting frustrated. To me, that's the type of stuff that we focus on as a company to try to make our products as, as user-friendly as possible, that you get rid of you know, those, those missteps. And so for me, that, that was uh, probably the biggest thing that we talked about, you know, it was just an aha moment. So uh, we worked to get uh, basically set up as a uh, channel partner with Denso. I have added, uh, all of our products are available through an online configurator. Um, so we've recently just actually last week or this week added the Denso scanner and a couple different bracket options to work with three different cart offerings. So that's up and off deck. And um, I think we were working with Michelle Kaiser, our marketing manager. Has that uh, article, that blog been been published? Paul? Yes, yes it has. Okay, yeah. so we, we put together a joint piece basically just around the spirit of cleanability in general. So we've we've been doing a few things together. <laughs> well, please share that link with me and we'll be sure to post it uh, on the archival showing on the YouTube channel. Uh, we'd love to get that information. You know, uh, Paul, you were talking about when you guys developed the scanner, the things you uh, did to, <clears throat> to address the concerns in healthcare. I'd really like to ask both of you and Bradley, I'll start with you. You know, how much does customer input uh, get incorporated into product development? And do you have a formal process for engaging with the customers at the development stage? We do very much so. Um, I'm going to say that it's gotten better and tighter uh, and more robust in the last couple of years. A uh, few products ago was really our first uh, real effort into VOC or voice of customer. We're currently designing a next generation point of care cart. Um, Within the last few months, we completed, I think the number is 25 one-hour interviews, almost all virtual, but these were global. I mean, we're very much a global comp company. I want to make sure that our products, um, you know, have have meaning, meaningness or meaningfulness uh, in different uh, uh, geographic regions. Um, like I said, if, you, if you've seen one hospital, you've seen one hospital. Um, how, <laughs> how folks use our products in Scandinavia, for instance, very different, very different focus, heavy on med management side versus the U.S. And uh, again, going back and drawing from my design background, 
just just observation, just you know, ethnographic uh, research, just kind of being a fly on the wall and not asking the questions. Now, if you ask a question, kind of like Paul said, they'll tell you what they don't like. Uh, but if you watch somebody work, you can come back and say, "Why did you do it this way? What you know, what would be better?" Uh, if you just ask them a simple question, now the cart's fine, you know. But if you see the way they work and their workarounds or how they personalized it to make up for something. Uh, it's, it's really all telling. I've got some great slideshows from customers where you see how they've adapted our products that's to better I, yeah. fit their needs. So um, that's very much a part of our, our philosophy is the whole voice of customer. We also have a, we sell through distribution as well as direct, but our, our VAR value-added reseller um, network, we have a VAR council and we do the same with them. We sort of give them a, a look early on and get their feedback and uh, meet with that council on a number of issues on a, on a quarterly basis and then try to do a, a face-to-face meeting once a year for the same reason, because we're selling to them. If they don't believe it, they're not going to promote it, right? Absolutely critical <clears throat> to get the user's input and feedback. And again, I'll bring up, I love the silver lining story that you've seen the difference that the customers are now asking to address uh, infection prevention measures within the devices. And you guys have incorporated that. I think that's a home run. Um, same question to you, Paul. Uh, what do you do to solicit your customers' feedback on the product development side? So for us, it's very similar to that, uh, except that we go through both our channel partners, since we're a distributor and we deal with with partners like like uh, Brad and and other dealers, uh, as well as the end user. So it's very important to be able to talk to both levels for us. Uh, at the hospital level, we want to talk to the IT and uh, some of the actual users that are using the products because they have two different perspectives of how things should work. One wants to be easy to use and the other one wants it to be easy to manage. So we kind of want to set up those meetings to be able to speak to two different areas of the hospital. And the partners, they also want, they also have a different perspective. They want to make sure that it's something that they can easily put out to a lot of different locations. Like like Brad said, uh, like Bradley said, you visited one hospital, you visited one hospital. So they all have different ways of doing things. If you have hospitals in Southern California versus back East or in the Midwest, they'll do things a little different. So having that feedback from our partners is very important. We kind of compile all that together and in one way or another, it always seems that even though they're presenting their requirements, differently from different areas, it all kind of adds up to the same, the same solution, right? The same problems. Uh, they might have a different focus, like maybe the contacts are a problem in one place, but the uh, the power drain on the battery is another one. Or we had one facility that said that they spent 40 hours a month changing batteries on their scanners because they would wear out. So we needed to address that. So at the end, we put that together put that in front of the uh, a group at the manufacturer that does the development and we'll go through the what we'd like to see and the reasons why, not just our opinion, but it's we have backup information, right? Partners and hospitals that have all that. And, and it's more successful that way. Well, I know you guys are both global players in the market. Uh, just to tag on to that, have either of you seen what you would consider kind of significant differences uh, between the way things are done in certain regions of the United States versus maybe some international regions, uh, because it, the same problem, right? But different resources and different workflows. Anything that you can share with our audience that you see as kind of interesting in the differences internationally? For me, the biggest uh obvious issue or, or difference related to our point of care cards is, you know, what percentage XUS still uses them as a primary means for medication dispensing versus in the U.S., you know, through the likes of Omnicell or Apixis, it's mostly a one-to-one -one med pass from an ADC and not on a cart. So as we're designing products that you need, you want to make sure are relevant in all areas, so with the exception of the VA in the US, uh, almost all the facilities are doing, a, you know, from an ADC to a patient, a one-to-one -one med pass, or they should be. 
that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> right. Paul, same question to you. Are uh, international countries typically uh, using barcode scanners as prolifically as we do in U.S. healthcare? Yes, yes. Um, so Denzel, the partner that I work with in the development of this scanner, they are, they are a Japanese company and they are the number one 98% market share in Japan. They build a lot of barcode scanners that's used quite a bit in healthcare as well. Um, so Asia, in some countries in Asia, it's very important to have the infection control type of device. They've had anti, um, if disinfectant ready plastics for a number of years already, because it's important there as well as in Europe. And now we're finding more, more so in Europe, the request for the antimicrobial plastics because that's the additional level of protection over just wiping it down with chemicals. So we see that in Europe, it's getting more and more important. Uh, in Asia, it's a, outside of Japan, it's just a little behind the curve, but it's also important there as well. well uh, very important in Japan. In, fa in fact, a, a lot of this antimicrobial technology was innovated in Japan. What about regulatory issues? Uh, are there any regulatory differences uh, between uh, the U.S. market and, and other international markets that you deal with? I haven't seen that as of yet. Um, our product is relatively new, so we haven't seen that. We know that in Canada there are some additional requirements or what you can say or how the product is presented is different than the United States. So, um, But as far as Europe, we haven't really encountered any of those, those uh, scenarios yet. Yeah, well, as you mentioned, the differences in Canada. For us, it's mostly the electrical certifications. Right. Sure. Uh, depending on which region of the world you're, you're working through or with. Absolutely. Gentlemen, we have a question that's come in from our audience. Jordan asks, what does the future of Bradley and Paul's partnership look like? And what does that look like for their company? So you guys have, have made the introduction, you've partnered <clears throat> together, you've done some joint releases. What does success look like? What's the goal? I'd say keep building on what we've started. Yeah, absolutely. I think... Uh, working together to uh, cross cross market both products is uh, is going to help both companies. Um, like we're going to continue to participate in joint trade shows and um, other marketing events. I think that'll be very beneficial to both of us. Yeah, and we've done things like introduced uh, the den new Denso scanner to uh, at least one of our larger uh, channel partners. I know that they were very interested in it. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's working together. We're sort of feeding off of each other and, and hopefully building on those successes. Well, and, and that's the benefit of the trade shows and being able to, to meet and greet and then uh, transform that into an opportunity. And that's much the goal of the Clean Talk podcast platform as well, to bring like-minded uh, people in the infection prevention, infection control space together to identify best practices and new emerging solutions. And to that point, uh, I'm going to put you guys both on the spot a little bit. Uh, Bradley, I, again, I have to keep coming back to now in these COVID times, people are asking for solutions that address infection control as a priority. Any predictions for the future for uh, your business in terms of the technology and where you see things maybe going or changing in the future? Well, I don't think the cleaning protocol, whether it's due to COVID or not, but what is now status quo today, I don't see that dropping back. If anything else, I think it'll continue, maybe not as steeply, but continue uh, to, to accelerate. Um, for us, you know, we try to be as agnostic as possible when it comes to technology on our carts. Uh, we don't want to be locked into a certain form factor or, or a brand of computer or, or monitor or all in one. So that's really just something that has to be accommodated and thought through in you know design of new products. You know, whether that's the load rating on a vase amount to make sure that you can handle 25 pounds or a certain space available in the tech bay to make sure you can handle a micro or a small form factor or other computers. Really for us, you know, the cleanability, that's that's the known, that's the product that we offer. But people bundle just about anything you can think of, whether it's monitors, all-in-ones, computers, printers, scanners, uh, 
vital signs monitors, these signature pads with our products. So we've got to sort of be able to adapt and, and build those items into the core design. But if the core design isn't right, it doesn't really matter. Well, I hope you're right uh, that the priority of infection prevention will persist. I think history tells us uh, that we have short memories about these <laughs> pandemics, and uh, hopefully that won't be the case, and we continue to get better in helping to reduce not only hospital-acquired infections, but cross-contamination infections in general. What about you, Paul? Any predictions for the future in your space? Um, I agree with what uh, Bradley said. I think I don't think it's going to go away. I think it was here before COVID started, and it's just been a more focused. And for us, we even uh, partner with Citus, who makes uh, barcode printers and point of sale printers. And I know they just came out with a line of antimicrobial point of sale receipt printers, which kind of brings into where our scanner is going to be found as well, not just in healthcare, but anywhere where you're maybe just, you know, distributing food or packing uh, meat packing facilities, convenience stores. We don't want that cross contamination in our in our intake as well. So we find that that's another vertical that's gonna be very concerned about infection control moving forward Absolutely. as well. And Absolutely. Citizen does as well. And that's why they came out, they're coming out with, uh, they've already released their receipt printer that's antimicrobial as well. Fantastic. Well guys, uh, you know, we are an infection control podcast, but uh, I feel that people in the infection control community who are, are, are travelers on our same path, also tend to have a uh, greater focus on community reinvestment. Can uh, you tell me, Bradley, I'll start with you, you know, what kinds of things are you doing at Touchpoint uh, to help support the community? And um, what would you like to talk about in that regard? Probably the biggest thing that comes to mind was during that uh, surge of COVID, uh, there were a lot of, I'll call them surge centers, whether they were 10 hospitals in uh, Central Park, our local facilities near the Odessa, Florida area. We, we donated as a company, a lot of our uh, roll stands with, um, you know, basically an iPad light duty uh, base amount on it. Uh, and those really became, I'll, I'll call it poor man's telehealth cart. Also antimicrobial, but um, it was, you know, sort of a sad uh, donation in that these were basically giving family members a last time to say goodbye in many cases to a patient. But, uh, you know, that was, that was a very nice uh, feeling to be able to, uh, you know, impact some of those facilities uh, and hopefully make some people's lives better in, in those situations. Absolutely. And a, a critical application for uh, the technology we have today. And, you know, you said, as you said, it's sad, but really what a gift to be able to let people um, you know, see their loved ones for a last time, even if they're in isolation. Uh, right. Um, so uh, mm -hmm. I commend you for that. Thank you for that. Paul, what about uh, peripheral resources? What do you guys like to do? Well, we are, my son has a medical background, so he's always been, and we've continued to support Doctors Without Borders. You know, it's uh, Fantastic. our health system in the United States. It's pretty good, but there's a lot of places, other countries, other parts of the world that need support, and so we do that. And I know Denzo, Denzo the, our partner with the scanner, they have a, big initiative in um, providing support, whether it's with, through national disasters and the, and the Red Cross. I know their, um, their business initiative is green and peace of mind. So that's kind of uh, their motto, and they do a lot of things to support that throughout the world. What a fantastic organization. And thank you for supporting the Doctors Without Borders. Guys, I, I would love to be able to tell our audience how they can find out more about your products. But First, let's talk a little bit about the distribution because um, I assume that there are some similarities in uh, your distribution channels and in your customer bases, but probably quite a few differences in the way you approach the distribution channel as well. Bradley, uh, tell us a little bit about the distribution for Touchpoint and how our audience members who are interested in getting a Touchpoint product into their facilities or finding out more, what should they do? I'll start. <laughs> with the latter first. So, you know, touchpointmed.com uh, will get you to our website and it'll give you an overview of the products. Um, there's the ability to request a demo through there to request a quote to get you in contact with a value-added reseller or one of our salespeople. On the point of care side, especially uh, in the Americas, 
We mostly sell probably 80% of our products through value-added resellers, but we do sell direct as well. Uh, that model is a little different in other parts of the world. By segment, oh, we, and we do have a very strong international distribution uh, network as well. So as I mentioned, we are a global uh, company. By segment, though, it does differ on our automated medication side of things. Um, that's mostly a direct sale. We go into smaller accounts typically with those uh, ADC uh, solutions, which might be surgery centers, long-term care, uh, teaching hospitals where they, they have a sim lab and they want one cart and one ADC to kind of walk students through that process and kind of uh, cut their teeth on that solution so that when they get out into the wild, so to speak, they're ready to uh, uh, experience, uh, you know, hopefully our solutions, but it could be anybody's just understanding that that workflow. And then on the ITD side, that's really our um, medical device manufacturing side of things. We manufacture carts um, working directly with companies like an Arthrex or a, a Smith & Nephew or a ConMed. So it'll be our cart, but it won't be branded Touchpoint Medical or ITD. It'll be branded with the company that we're working with uh, directly. So those are really the, the various ways that we distribute and, and go to market. What percentage of your products would you say are private labeled versus the Touchpoint brand? Um, probably 25%, maybe 30%, because it's it's all the OEM side is private label, yes. Fantastic, good. Well, uh, same question for you, Paul. Um, I know you are a distributor, but we've been talking about the product development side. I'd say that's maybe untraditional distribution. Uh, what can you tell us about your go-to-market strategy and how people can find out more about peripheral resources? Well, absolutely. So we work primarily through partners, dealers, and and uh, OEMs, people that create solutions as well. Uh, that's our primary focus. And um, we're, all our information is online at peripheralresources.com. That's a, a very long URL, but uh, you only have to remember it once. Uh, and that's kind of what we want to do. We want to find partners similar to Bradley uh, and, and others that understand what the solution does and how it helps them. And then we go from there. So we have partners all over the United States, in Canada, and also in Central and South America. So we're all of the Americas. We're involved in all of the Americas. Uh, Europe and, and Asia, they, there's there are other distribution channels, but um, that they have there. So we're not really that focused in there. However, with this scanner, we do have a global reach for that. So we will be working with partners in those areas as well. Well, guys, I'm just going to say it. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of cart manufacturers out there. I know a lot of them. There are a lot of barcode scanner guys out there. I know a lot of them. But I have to commend you for having purposefully designed products for infection control. There's not enough of that going on. I think it's a huge differentiator in your respective spaces for both of you guys. And certainly we love it at Clean Talk. And we really appreciate you being on our show today. Uh, for my guests today, Bradley Carlson and Paul Landazuri, I'm your host, Brad Whitchurch, reminding you until next time to keep it clean.